Afrika Mashariki Tuwezeshe kuishi kwa amani Tutimize na malengo yetu Jumuiya yetu sote tulinde tuajibike tuimarike umoja wetu ni nguzo yetu ndugu jumuiya yetu Uzalendo pia mshikamano viwe msingi
Thank you, DJ. Thank you, choir. Uh, what we shall have next is the opening prayer, and it shall be led by the Principal Assistant Secretary, Mrs. Joyce Okot Chiwanuka. Let's humble ourselves and pray. Our Sovereign Father in Heaven, we just want to thank you, Lord, this morning. We thank you, Father, that this, uh, this morning, and we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of work and for the opportunity you've given us, Lord, to serve in this great institution. Father, we pray that you give us the, the, the intelligence, Lord, to do the right thing and help us, Lord, to make positive contributions to this nation through this ministry, Lord. We pray for the leadership and management of this ministry, Father. Lord, give them the wisdom, Lord, and the understanding that they need to lead this institution and to lead all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. You may please take your seats. The guest of honor, Honorable Minister of State for Higher Education, the Permanent Secretary, the ITC chairperson and the ITC members present, the directors, DIT staff, media fraternity, ladies and gentlemen, good morning once again. My name is Jacqueline Akulo. I work as the public relations officer at the Directorate of Industrial Training. On behalf of the chairperson, Industrial Training Council, Dr. Joseph Muvawala, on behalf of the Director DIT, Mr. Patrick Piakatonda, I take this opportunity to welcome you all to the Directorate of Industrial Training. I also take this opportunity to welcome the live stream and everyone across the country who is watching live from home, our dear staff, people from different institutions. We thank you so much for your contribution, for leading us through to the end of this re release of the results. I also thank the media team who is available, UBC, NBS, Spark TV, Baba TV. We thank you so much for your participation in the release of the results of DIT. As we release these results, we pray and hope that each and everyone is maintaining and observing their SOPs as directed by the Ministry of Health. Okay. Therefore, we'll go straight to the program again. Next on the agenda, we shall have the remarks, the release statements. We shall have the opening remarks by the Chairperson, Industrial Training Council, that is Dr. Muvawala Joseph, who will later on invite the Director to make his release statements. Dr. Joseph Muvawala, you're welcome. This will not apply to me. Okay. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have never been fired up this morning, though I am. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Are we so tired this morning? We'll do it again. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can we put our hands together and welcome the Honorable Minister? Some of us who are trained, we are trained how to clap. Can we clap in an organized way? Thank you. Hello, Minister of State for Higher Education, the representative of the Permanent Secretary, the Director of Higher Education, Technical and Vocational Education, the Commission of Technical Operation, Operations and Management, members of the Industrial Training Council, the management of DIT, senior and old staff members, members of the press, 
our invited guests and all Ugandans watching this release. Honorable Minister, before I make this statement, let me take this opportunity to introduce to you our members of the ITC. And I will introduce them by their constituents. The member of ITC who represents the private trainers. And most of the time, he is also the chair of the assessment committee, which is the heart of this institution. And we have a member from the Ministry of Gender, and Honorable Minister, you know why we have Minister of Gender. The Minister of Gender is in charge of the apprenticeship framework. And as DIT, we are in charge of assessment of that apprenticeship. And from Uganda Manufacturers Association, I have my brother, who is also an entrepreneur of that Mayondo enterprise and the supply of all the furniture I use. But it's only for those who can afford. <laughs> and and uh, we have our brother, Mr. Lima, who is a special need and make sure that everything we do on this is in that line. Some other members are not here today. We have our directors, the head of administration, and we have the head of assessment. And who is heading now? Qualifications? Yes. Honorable Minister, the National Resistance Movement Manifesto is committed to dealing with the underutilization of TVET. This is done by relaxing the entry requirements such that willing learners, regardless of their previous qualifications, are eligible for, for admission. The language of instruction will not be tailored to the learner's proficiency. This gives a chance to youth who are willing to acquire skills and certifications to acquire them. Similarly, Honorable Minister, as contained in the National Development Plan 3, for which I am proud to be associated in my other capacity, the Directorate of Industrial Training has the duty of rolling out the modularized curricula for all formal technical TV programs so that to achieve a flexible demand-driven TV system in Uganda. In the same plan, sir, the DIT has a duty to assess and certify the competences acquired by the trainees, beneficiaries during apprenticeship, traineeship, and further training or upgrading in order to foster and promote the relevance of skill training and lifelong learning in Uganda. Honorable Minister, based on the two concerns above, the continued existence of the Directorate of Industrial Training is essential since it has a critical role to play in the attainment of the aspirations of the manifesto and the delivery of the development plan. Honorable Minister, as contained in the TVET implementation standards assented to by the First Lady and her Minister of Education and Sports, the mandate of DIT is restricted to promoting the highest standards in the quality and efficiency of industrial training in the country and ensuring an adequate supply of properly trained manpower at all levels. DIT guides the delivery of formal and informal training programs to meet the domestic manpower demands of a skilled labor force for wage employment, self-employment, and entrepreneurship around the country. Honorable Minister, though not part of this statement, as a national planner, I know that the biggest supplier of skills in this country is the informal and non-formal. Honorable Minister, the Directorate of Industrial Training develops training standards, assessment and training packages, ATPs, that guide the training of workers in the industry 
and apprenticeships in the workplace. The ATPs that we are issuing honorable ministers are ISO certified. The IS4 certification assures the public of the quality, the safety, and efficiency of our services and systems. DIT certification is now recognized not only in Uganda, but worldwide. I am surprised my team does not clap, but uh, <laughs> our minister, under section 18D, page 12, the Industrial Training Council is mandated to prescribe by statutory instruments the rules of assessment and certification of assessment and certification, accreditation and inspection of assessment centers, promotion of CBET and apprenticeship training. And Honorable Minister, I want to inform you that we have now developed all these instruments and they are ready with the Solicitor General for issuance. Honorable Minister, as I conclude, I thank you and thank the Honorable Minister of Education and Sports for the continued technical and financial support rendered to the Industrial Training Council and the Directorate of Industrial Training. I want to pledge to you, sir, that this institution can become self-financing. And we will work towards that to ensure that this institution becomes self-financing without causing access problems to the people who want our services. I thank the development partners and not here with us, including the PSFU, Skilled Development Fund, Enabel, Koika, KFW, JICA, UNIDO, ILO, and GZ for their continued support to the directorate. I want to thank the media, the assessors, who are the most important people, the supervisors in industry, the verifiers, the instructors, the heads of training institutions and assessment centers, the parents and the guardians, and the experts from the industry, most of whom are not here with us due to this COVID problem, for their valuable support to the industrial training. And lastly, but not least, I thank the director. I want to thank you, Honorable Minister, for sending us this man. I want to thank the director. Just yesterday, we were discussing this speech. And today, it is coming out like a book. Just yesterday, at around 5, it's now coming out like a book. I want to thank the staff for a job well done and keeping the family in this institution. I also know that there is no family that does not have issues. Any family will have issues. But I want to thank all of you that we are working together as a family. And when we go wrong, we correct each other. I want to encourage you to continue on this line and thank you again for supporting me and my team of the Industrial Training Council because, Honorable Minister, our term ends and as uh, abiding Ugandans, we are back where necessary for reappointment and we are waiting to ensure that this institution is well guided. But however, let me take this singular honor, Honorable Minister, for I think this is my last time to address you as a chairperson because my term has ended. It is renewal, but that's not my work. Honorable Minister, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to lead this institution from what was its dying days to its life now. I hope that whoever takes over from where we have stopped will continue with the good work we've done by allowing the technical people to do the technical work. I am praying that let the technical work lead whatever we do here. Let our mission to certify those who don't have been certified lead whatever we do. In whatever media things we do, in whatever investments we make, let us put the Ugandan who needs the skill ahead of everything. I am saying bye to all of you. We meet again if reappointed. If not, we meet again in my other life. May God bless you. Bless you very much. I want to also personally thank you, BIT, for sending off my father in a very good way when you came. Thank you very much.
May I take this opportunity now, using the powers vested in me, to allow the director to release the readers on the behalf of the ITC. We are going to speak on his head as if we are ghosts. But whatever he says is ours, it is not his. Can you, director, come and do the honors? I thank you, and may God bless you all. Honorable Minister of State for Higher Education, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Education and Sports, the Director, HTVET, the Representative of the Commission at Vetum, and the Development Partners, Chairman, and members of Industrial Training Council, Director and Commissioners, officials from Ministry, staff of DIT, members of the private sector, principals, heads of institutions, companies, enterprises, members of the press fraternity, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Minister, Chairman has already introduced my staff, but uh, what I need to add on, we have our neighbor, who is the, that is the principal Google vocational, please stand up. We also have a principal in Tinder Vocational. Honorable Minister, the land of Untinda Vocational is a DIT land. So DIT is a foundation body. Honorable Minister, the Directorate of Industrial Training with pleasure presents to you the results of 2020. 10 series occupation assessment of UVQL for, for occupations level 1, 2, 3, and 4. The module assessment for October to December 2020. However, this assessment, which was supposed to be done in October to December 2020, was conducted from March up to May 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation in the country. This release is in line with section 21 and section 14H of the BTVET Act of 2008. Honorable Minister, total candidature. The total, the total number of 65,126 candidates registered for 2020 UVQF for occupations, level 1, 2, 3, and 4, and modernized assessment from 912 assessment centers in 110 occupations compared to 62,772 candidates from 1,089 assessment centers in 70, uh, 75 occupations in 2019. This presents a percentage increase of 3.8%. Despite COVID, there was an increase in candidature. For the number of candidates registered, and an increase of 46.7% for the occupations. Honorable Minister, a total of 38,526, that is 59.2% female candidates, and 26,600, that is 40.8% male candidates, were registered in 2020 compared to 43,473, that is 49.3% female, and 19,299, that is 30.7% male candidates, registered in 2019, as shown in the table below. Honorable Minister, Table 1 shows the distribution and comparison, the distribution between female and male, and the total candidature between 2020 and 2019. Out of the 65,126 65, candidates registered, 9,826 candidates, that is 15.1%, candidates were registered for the full occupation assessment level 1, 2, 3, and 4. And 55,264, that is 84.9% candidates registered for module assessment. It is shown in table 2. 
Honorable Minister, the table two shows the distribution of between different full occupation and modular assessment. Honorable Minister, a total of 274, 30.4, 30%. Assessment center registered their candidates for the full occupation assessment, and 638, that is 70% of the assessment centers registered their candidates for modular assessment. Out of the 9,862 candidates registered for the full occupation assessment, 3,158, that is 32, 000, I mean 32%. Candidates were registered for level one occupation assessment, 6,578, 66.7%. Candidates were registered for the level two occupation assessment, 36, that is 0.4%. Candidates were registered for the level three occupation assessment, and 90, that is 0.9%. Candidates registered for level four occupation assessment, as shown in table three. Honorable Minister, the table three shows full occupations, the centers, then the percentage of the centers, and the number of candidates. Honorable Minister, out of the 9,860 candidates registered for the full occupations assessment, 4,112, that is 41.7% candidates were female, and 5,750, that is 58.3% candidates were made, as shown in table four. Honorable Minister, for the modular assessment, a total of 55,264 candidates registered from 638 assessment centers in four economic sectors. Out of these, 34,414, that is 62.3% candidates were female, and 20,850, 37.7% candidates were male, as shown in table five. Honorable Minister, the manufacturing sector registered the highest number of candidates at 23,575, constituting of 42 0.7% of the total number of registered candidates of all the sector. The manufacturing sector registered the highest number of female candidates. That is 15,749, constituting 28.5% of the total number of candidates registered. The tourism and hospitality sector registered the least number of male candidates at 2,240. 45, constituting 4.1% of the total number of candidates registered as shown in Table 6. Honorable Minister, compared to Table 7, the gender distribution of candidates by sector in 2018, so the two, we are comparing the two years, 2020 and 2019. Honorable Minister, Page 7, that is performance of candidates. How did the candidates perform? In terms of performance for the levels 1, 2, 3, and 4, full occupation assessment, 9,517, that is 96.5% candidates, were successful. 62, that is 0.6%, candidates were referred. 134, that is 1.4% candidates were unsuccessful. And 149, 1.5% candidates were absent, as shown in Table 8. This represents a 9.4 increase compared to 2019. Honorable Minister, the number of successful candidates, the referred, the unsuccessful, and absent, it is indicated in Table 8. The level one for occupations, Honorable Minister, in terms of performance for level one for occupation assessment, a total of 3,158 candidates were assessed and certified. Out of these 3,037, 96.2% candidates were successful, 16, that is 0.5 candidates were referred, 47, 1.5 candidates were unsuccessful, and 58, 1.8% candidates were absent as shown in Table 9. The re this represents 10.7% increase 
in performance of successful candidates in 2020 compared to 2019. Honorable Minister, Table 9, the number of successful, unsuccessful, and absence of candidates under a level 1 is indicated. Then we go to level 2, full occupation assessment. In terms of performance for level 2, full occupation assessment, a total of 6,578 candidates were assessed and certified. This represents a percentage increase of 26.3 as compared to 2019. Honorable Minister, in terms of performance for level 2, full occupation assessment, 6,396 that is 97.2 percent candidates were successful 15 that is 0 0.2 percent candidates were referred 85 1.3 percent candidates were unsuccessful and 82 1.3 percent candidates were absent as shown in table 10. this represents an 8.8 percent increase in performance for successful candidates in 2020 compared to 29 Honorable Minister, the 20, uh, Table 10 explain that. Honorable Minister, Table 11, the explanation is that in terms of that is level 3, in terms of performance for level 3, full occupation assessment, a total of 36 candidates were assessed and certified in terms of performance for level 3, full occupation assessment. 25, that is 69.4 percent candidates were unsuccessful and 5.6 percent candidates were referred and 5.6 percent candidates were unsuccessful as shown in table 11. Honorable Minister, level 4 full occupation assessment. In terms of performance for level 4 full occupation assessment, a total of 90 candidates were assessed and certified representing a percentage decrease of 22.4 percent as compared to 2019. In the level 4 full occupation assessment, 59, that is 65.6 candidates were successful, 29 candidates were referred, 2 candidates were unsuccessful, as shown in table 12. This represents 14.6, which is a decrease. Honorable Minister, under modular assessment, a total of 55,264 candidates were assessed and certified representing a percentage increase of 4.6 percent as compared to 2019. In terms of performance for modular assessment, 48,192, 87.2 percent candidates were successful. 1,125, that is 2 percent candidates were unsuccessful. And 5,947, 10.8 percent candidates were absent as shown in table 13. This represents a 5.3 percent decrease in performance for the successful candidates, a percentage of 0 0.7 for unsuccessful candidates, and a percentage increase of 4.6 in absence. Honorable Minister, the overall, the overall performance by gender is indicated in table 14. Honorable Minister, allow me to report on assessment of candidates with special needs. A total of 4,489 candidates with special needs were registered from 11 assessment centers compared to 169 candidates registered from 16 assessment centers in 2019. Of these, 431, 88.1 percent candidates were female and 58 that is 11.9 percent were male compared to 133 that is 78.7 percent female candidates and 36 that is 21.3 male candidates registered in 20 in 2019 which means honorable minister the number of candidates for special needs has increased almost double Honorable Minister, those who are successful, it is also shown in Table 15. Honorable Minister, 
some of the, uh, the centers who presented candidates are uh, indicated on page 12. And uh, these are the ones who have mainly, there are others, other five, they have both candidates, special needs and those without special needs. But these ones are specifically for special needs. We have body Tarwogi training center of the blind. The number of candidates we attend is from Ruero. We have re human rights of women and girls with disability, 29 from Wachiso. We have Masaka Disabled Persons Association, 19 from Masaka. We have Mbari School for the Deaf. It presented three, 365 candidates in Mbari. Then Ruvind Women with Disability, 47 in Barara District. Shema Vocation Center for the Disabled, 19 from Shema. Honorable Minister, we also assess refugees. This is 70 percent. 30 percent is for the host community. So here we are reporting on the 70 percent. A total of 1,490 candidates from refugees were registered from six assessment centers. Out of these, 752, that is 50.5 percent candidates, were female, and 738, 49.5 percent, were male. Out of these, 1,490 candidates were registered, 1,397, 93.8 percent were successful, while 7, that is 0 0.5 percent candidates, were unsuccessful, and 86, 5.8 percent candidates were absent as shown in table 16. Honorable Minister, the category of occupation is, is, is given and also the, the centers. Honorable Minister, key achievements. Honorable Minister, allow me to present to you that some of the achievements registered in the Directorate of Industrial Training those ones specifically related to the assessment and certification and release. DIT is ISO certified. The Directorate of Industry has been certified with International Organization of Standards, ISO certificate, ISO 9001, then 2015. The standard is recognized worldwide. And this one sits, puts the Directorate at an upper hand. Actually, Honorable Minister, NIT of Kenya is ISO certified. DI of Uganda is also ISO certified. Honorable Minister, an increase in number of candidates assessed. The, the Directorate has over the years registered an increase in the number of candidates for occupational competency-based assessment for the world of work between 2016 and 2017 to 2020 to 2021. The increase between these two, from 2016-2017 financial year to currently, the increment is by 281% despite COVID. So that table, Honorable Minister, the table shows the increment. Between 2016-2017 to up to current, financial year 2020, the, the last financial year, we have so far assessed 213,438 candidates in total. Increase in center numbers. Honorable Minister, the assessment centers have also increased from 549 to 2,792 for both modular and full occupations. Honorable Minister, we have signed a total of 28 memorandum of understanding with different companies and partners. Honorable Minister, we also work with technical departments. We work closely with Uganda National Examination Bank Board, especially benchmarking on online registration. Actually, they also trained our staff. UNEB trained our staff on online registration. And as we release, our results are available on the portal. 
National Curriculum Development Center, we worked with them on, when on developing of the new lower secondary school. Honorable Minister, we are a member of different organizations. We are a member of Federation of Uganda Employers. We are a member of Uganda Manufacturers Association. We are a member of Uganda Small Scale Industries Association. And we are a member of Institute of Procurement and Professional Procurement Professionals of Uganda. Honorable Minister, the, the DIT has received several awards, one by U, URA, then another one, two. We are best, according to these ones, they ranked as the best quality assurance body in the skills development subsector, 2019 and 2020. Honorable Minister, Minister Online Registration, the directorate developed the assessment, management, and online registration of candidates, of course being assisted by UNEB. Before that, the directorate was managing the process of assessment through assessment centers, submitting candidate data. The world being, or we are now being managing it, they just don't come here because of COVID. Otherwise, it was always done manually. Honorable Minister, the occupation assessed by DIT have also increased. You have already seen in our print array the packages which are there. But what to note, the process of developing this ATP, we use professionals in herbal industry. If you, you cross check our packages, you will see at least the names like of Dr. Nambatia Cheine, who is well known in herbal medicine. And among the quality checking team, you will not miss the name of Professor Patrick Ogwang, who is well known in the country because of COVID-19. Professor Ogwang, he started working with DIT since 2018, before he has become a celebrity. Honorable Minister, we do training of staff, PhD, we have one ongoing, one completed professional courses, Six have completed, 29 are ongoing. Master's degree, 36 are ongoing, 17 have completed. Postgraduate diplomas, 154 are ongoing, 15 have completed. We also train, actually we work with different bodies to train our verifiers in vocational skills, hands-on. And a total of 245 have completed. 387 are still. Honorable Minister, challenges. Inadequate funding is still a challenge. We are trying to improve our budget. However, competence-based assessment is expensive and we need more funding. Honorable Minister, in terms of uh, assessment centers, some of them have, uh, they have limited the equipment and materials this one we assess in shift which also prolong our assessment centers honorable minister some of the institutions unfortunately have continued to issue their own certificate for their trainees which is contrary to bitvet act 2008 section 21. honorable minister acknowledgement Honorable Minister, allow me to express our gratitude to you and the entire Ministry of Education and Sports for the continued support rendered to the Directorate, particularly in funding activities and policy issues. Honorable Minister, we appreciate the leadership and the role of the Industrial Training Council, which is the policy-making organ for the Directorate. Honorable Minister, we are also grateful to the development partners the Private Sector Foundation, PSFU, UNIDO, ILO, JAICA, COICA, NABER, GIZ, NRC for supporting skills development. Honorable Minister, <coughs> excuse me, we appreciate the Department for providing funds for the training of especially the non-formal trainees and also for their assessment. Honorable Minister, the staff of Tivetum, they are already here. I request them to stand up and you recognize them.
Commanding, we are also grateful for the head teacher of Umbarara Municipal Primary School for taking on the dual system. Honorable Minister, we thank all our assessors and verifiers for service rendered to this country. Honorable Minister, I also thank the staff of the Directorate for the work well done. Honorable Minister, you can imagine when did we leave this place at night and during curfew. So I cannot give the answer now. Honorable Minister, the Directorate appreciates support from heads of assessment centers parents, guardians, industries, enterprises, and other stakeholders despite the challenging period due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Honorable Minister, the director has thank the press. You have seen them, they are already here, standing, and the media for the support in skills development awareness. This media, they are the ones to promote skills development. In conclusion, I congratulate the candidates and all the assessment centers. I encourage the candidates to continue upgrading their skills up to the highest level of competences with their, within their occupation. Finally, Honorable Minister, the Directorate is committed to continue conducting the skills occupation competence-based assessment and certification for the world of work in the BTVET subsector as mandated in the BTVET Act 2008. Honorable Minister, results and all certificates are ready for correction immediately after you release the results. The occupational assessment can be obtained from our online management system after the official release. Honorable Minister, we thank, we shall always work together as we continue promoting employable skills. Let me take this honor to hand over the occupational based assessment results 2020 to the chairperson industrial training council who will in turn hand over the, to the honorable minister for the release to the public. Thank you so much for God and my country. Thank you very much, Director, for the release statement. We appreciate. Honorable Minister, today we have the, let me take this opportunity also to recognize Stephen Wembing and then the engineer, Winnie Naluyimba, the Acting Commissioner, Ministry of Works. Thank you so much for coming. We also have the Assistant Commissioner of Basic Education, <laughs> representing the Permanent Secretary, Ikwa Krobat. Thank you for coming. We also have Mrs. Jolie Uzamukunda, the Commissioner University Education and Training, who is representing the Director HTV. Thank you for coming. We are going to have remarks from the Commissioner Tivet, who is representing
Thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have the next person to speak on the podium. Thank you so much, uh, MC of the day. Our beloved Honorable Minister of Education and Sports in charge of higher education, Dr. Jesse, the representative of our permanent secretary, Minister of Education and Sports, executive secretaries and directors of assessment bodies around, directors and commissioners who are here with us today, the chairperson of the ITC, and members of the Industrial Training Council who are here with us today. Our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I observe all the protocol. My name is Winston Awanitwe. I'm coming in for the Commissioner Tivet Operations and Management, Madam Loy Avine Muhwezi. Our uh, home Honorable Minister is not able to be here because of uh, other duties monitoring our construction projects in eastern Uganda. Honorable Minister and members, before I give the speech as written by the Commissioner I'm representing here, allow me to make just three remarks and then I will proceed. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to inform all of us that the Ministry of Education and Sports underwent a restructuring. Honorable Minister, that is when three departments were created the Department of TV Operations and Management, the Department of TV Trainers, um, Research and Innovations, and the Department of Health Education and Training. Honorable Minister, this restructuring was part of the reforms uh, which are also spelled out in the TV policy. The same policy which also established the TV operation, uh, the TV uh, Policy Implementation Secretariat, which I head, and also the Tivet Policy Implementation Working Group, which is representative of the world of work, and they are guiding the reforms. Ladies and gentlemen, the reform process, Honorable Minister, requires that we have an act for Tivet. Honorable Minister, we have a policy of Tivet 2019, but this policy remains are uh, unenforceable until we have an act of parliament which can enforce uh, the same. So, Honorable Minister, we seek your support as usual in the process to ensure that we have the act in place. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, read the speech of the Commissioner as is written here. It is my pleasure to welcome you, Honorable Minister, and all invited guests to this function at which the Directorate of Industrial Training is releasing results of the 2020 assessment. To us in the skilling and training delivery, Honorable Minister, it is on such a day that we exhibit to the public what we have been doing throughout the year. The Ministry of Education and Sports, Honorable Minister, was restructured as I had said before, I will not repeat that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is becoming clear today that TVET is the way to go for this country if we are to attain a middle income status and especially given the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. And while most of the offices and persons were locked down, members, the TVET related sectors of the economy, so many of them such as agriculture, construction, manufacturing and tourism among others remained open, they did not close. And this should be a wake up call, ladies and gentlemen, to all of us to prepare so that we can always overcome such challenges by way of continuing to skill our people so that we can continue to develop this country. Honorable Minister, we need skilled manpower if this country is to go forward and we thank you so much for the support you're giving the Ministry to ensure that this agenda is achieved. The Tibet Policy 2019 gives us a new direction in the training delivery, that every Ugandan who needs a skill now should be given an opportunity to be trained using the available means and training methods, whether they are informal, whether they are non-formal, and also formal. But the assessment and certification, ladies and gentlemen, 
must be done according to the agreed standards in the world of work. I'm glad to recognize that we have members from the world of work here, and I thank uh, DIT for being so wise to include a member from the world of work here. We are glad for that. For more assessment and certification, we allow the vertical and horizontal progression as well as manpower mobility. The skills training should not be discriminative and anybody should be allowed, whether uh, they are disadvantaged in terms of languages, whether they are disadvantaged in terms of impairment or even gender and education level, every person should be allowed to undertake TVET. Therefore, training and assessment should be uniform and flexible to allow everyone attain the level of competencies they desire. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me at this moment to thank the DIT for partnering with the ministry to assess the various trainees whom we are successfully, uh, who we successfully trained. Our training, ladies and gentlemen, would have been incomplete if we did not have assessment and certification. This is the only proof that these people can show to the world of work that indeed they have been trained and now they are assessed and therefore they pass. With the reform TVET system, ladies and gentlemen, these people are now free to rejoin the system for additional modules to gain more competencies. And the Department of TVETOM is already working with other agencies and partners to modularize the entire TVET system so that the training can be flexible to allow people to go off and return to the training when they feel they need more competencies. So the qualifications attained shall be linked together into one qualifications framework, Honorable Minister, and this framework will be comparable with the frameworks of the other countries in the East African community. So I call upon DIT and other assessment bodies to embrace the TVET policy reforms so that the envisaged streamlining of assessment based on occupational standards can be achieved. As I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the press who are here and those online as well for the support they are rendering to the ministry in terms of popularizing TVET. Kindly, the press, continue to make TVET our brand and your brand as well. Let us work together to, uh, to market TVET and also rebrand it in this country. Let's change the attitude of the people about TVET and make it a priority rather than the last priority of Ugandans. Uganda needs more skills, more than even ever before, and all of us appreciate that. And so it is time to sensitize the parents, the learners, and everybody in Uganda about the benefits of joining skills training over the general education pathway. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the government through you, Honorable Minister, for the support that they have accorded to the TVET reforms, and especially also in terms of training and assessment. I would like to encourage everybody to utilize the skills they have acquired, especially those who have been trained and assessed, to build themselves and also their families and the nation at large. Honorable Minister and members, I say this for God and my country. I thank you so much. Thank you very much for the remarks. Honorable Minister, allow me to call upon the Commissioner University Education and Training, who is representing the Director HTVET, who will later call upon the Permanent Secretary, Equap Robert, the Acting Commissioner Basic Education, who is representing the Permanent Secretary. Please step forward. Honorable Minister of State for Higher Education, Honorable J.C. Moyingo, 
directors and commissioners representatives of education development partners heads of Tibet institutions and providers management of staff management and staff of DIT members of the press ladies and gentlemen all protocols observed. Before I read a written text for the director, I would like to celebrate, take exception, to celebrate the achievement of DIT for that, uh, for the attainment of SOS certification. This one is a sign of the highest, of the highest accreditation level. And I want to congratulate you and all the the participants who participated in this noble cause. My name is Jore Uzamukunda Karabaya, Commissioner, University Education and Training, representing Dr. Jane Egao, the Director of, of, of Higher Education and Training. I bring warm greetings from the fraternity at the headquarter and especially the directorate uh, which G Dr. Jane leads for which I stand in, shoes, in her shoes. I bring her apology for her failure to be physically present uh, because she's away, she's outside the country on official duties. With that, I beg to start on my written text. Honor Minister, I take the opportunity to welcome all of you to this, to this function at which DIT is releasing results of the 10 series of DIT assessments results for the year 2020. I bring you greetings from the Ministry of Education and Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, this country's development shall live on employable skills which are relevant to the world of work. The skills training, the skills trained in and consequently acquired by the Arumanak and Aruma Mata shall and should properly match the employment performance requirements, especially as we reposition ourselves for competitiveness and global repositioning. You are well aware, Honorable Minister, Uganda Higher Education has repositioned itself as a hub for the best education. It's a known perception. Research is yet to come out to say so. I pride in that perception. And I want to take this exception, Honorable Minister, that at one time in 2010, 
You supported my candidature to represent Uganda as a delegate to negotiate the Common Market Protocol, which enshrined or enshrines the five freedoms, including that one of establishment, so that an East African will move here and enjoy all the five or the four freedoms as defined by the international bodies and the right of establishment because of that protocol. And therefore, the type of training at all levels of education is envisioned to mainstream that type of repositioning. Allow me, Honorable Minister, to assert that our trainees should, on, should not only be assumed to have competence, but be able to demonstrate the same through employment and job creation. Not any more job seekers and street traders. It is only then that the journey to the realization of a national development plan three, vision 2040, shall be meaningful and shall enshrine transformative society. Honorable Minister and Honorable Members, ladies and gentlemen, government through Tibet policy emphasizes public-private partnership through the collaboration with employers in implementing Tibet reforms related to training, assessment, and financing. The duration of such a collaboration, Honorable Minister, is a, cru a crucial precursor. Otherwise, it can be abused. Our employers, as you may all be aware, are at different levels, including individuals, small, medium, large, and large-scale categories. At every level, no minister, and ladies and gentlemen, and the category of employers, skills are required and skills training should be conducted by all the actors in the training arena. I therefore urge everyone to embrace the opportunity to train or be trained in various skills because according to the UNESCO, the UNESCO mandate is to implement lifelong learning. And at this particular moment, Honorable Minister, and our invited guests and everyone, this is the moment when the systems that used to be closed at the bottom, we now have to derive the, the various pathways that will enhance lifelong learning. No more learning at a certain level and then you stop. That is the, the mission that everyone should be adapting who is a player in this field. Well, now, Minister, the realization of this strategy is an effort by everyone, not just the employers. Tibet training institutions and assessments and assessment boards must ensure meaningful industrial attachment, which should be supervised and assessed at all levels. If well coordinated, on our Minister, industri industrial industries and the employment world in general provide a desirable training environment where the trainees are able to have real feel of the processes and this will nurture and will continue to nurture not only innovations and your creativity but also the much needed soft skills 
such as entrepreneurship, communication, and record keeping. The industry, in addition, avails the trainees and exposure to an up-to-date contemporary and modern technology, hence supplementing government's effort of skilling Ugandans for enhanced human capital productivity and performance. The employers, therefore, continue to support government through private public-private partnerships, which include skills training, among others. Allow me, at this point, to recognize the representative of employers who are here today to join the fraternity of this good cause. Please stand up for recognition. And if you know you are from private sector, let's recognize you because you are doing great. What government should have done, you are doing it. Thank you for filling that strategic gap. Ladies and gentlemen, once, once again, the training has been done in employment setup. There is a need for assessment. Tibet policy underscores the role of the Directorate of Industrial Training in trade testing. This form, this is a form of assessment should be purely competence-based and the trainees should be graded according to the levels of competence trained. With this, with this perspective, in this perspective, the cabinet approved the policy of one of whose major reforms is the establishment of Tibet qualification framework. This framework, once in place, shall regulate horizontal and vertical progression skills, skills acquisition. The Ministry of Education and Sports has already established a Tibet policy implementation working group and the secretariat. These together are charged with the responsibility to support the development of Tibet qualifications framework, among others. I ask everyone from I ask everyone to support them in this journey to ensure that our Tibet assessment is better harmonized. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pride. It is the pride that Uganda is a founder member of East African community and that continues to provide free labor movement and expanded market for our products, which are great strides in reducing unemployment and boosting our national and boosting our national income. For us to be free from this agenda, we need to align Tibet to the standards of Tibet in East African countries. For this reason, therefore, reforms in Tibet are long overdue. Honorable Minister, the social economic transformation that we desire must be found, founded on a strategic and objective interventions enshrined in a registration framework. Um, at one time, I will share this long text, which we think everyone should appreciate and enhance. And I would like to ask the Secretariat at one time to share this text so that the actors can have these ideas enhanced and practiced. Because we stand here, allow me, Honorable Minister, to talk about the need for certification. And as you are aware, everyone training should have evidence of training and clear demonstration of certain level of competence. As such, the trainees need to be assessed and certified based on fair, varied, and live assessment. This is a function of assessment boards. At this juncture, allow me to thank DIT for conducting assessments amid the COVID challenges. Further still, join me in congratulating all the trainees that have been successfully assessed by DIT 
and are now ready to, to receive their certificates. I must say, however, that the level of competence and the speciality of training should not only be your final destination, since you have the potential to diversify the skills and attain high, high competences in the different trades, even up to, up to PhD level. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, I expect DIT and the other key TVET stakeholders to adapt the TVET policy reforms and support them for the better of our country. I challenge everyone to be cognizant of the fact that national development takes priority, priority over other stroke individual interests. To the members of the press and media, you are, very, you are a vehicle for community transformation and we expect you to supplement government efforts of creating public awareness about the positive attitudes towards the Tibet. Please continue updating the nation about our Tibet reforms and the other government achievements related to skilling Uganda. I urge the general public to embrace as a vehicle for national, to embrace Tibet as a vehicle for national transformation. I thank you all. Thank you for listening to me, for God and my country. Who do I invite? Peace. Thank you so much, Mrs. Jolly, who is a Mukunda for the remarks. We take this opportunity to welcome the representative of the permanent secretary, to welcome the chief guest and the minister of state for higher education to address us and later on release the results for the Directorate of Industrial Training for the year 2020. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister and Minister of State for Higher Education, the Chairperson and the members of DIT Council, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as introduced earlier, I'm here on behalf of the PS, so I bring the apology of the PS for not being able to be here in person. My name is Equap Robert. Uh, I'm the Assistant Commissioner. I've been in office for about one month now. So, Honorable Minister, before I invite you to address, permit me to congratulate uh, DIT for the steps that you have taken in the right direction, the achievement, the numerous achievements that you have made. On the same note, I'd also like to congratulate the students uh, whose results are being released today. But I join the earlier speakers to encourage you to utilize those results, I mean to utilize the skills that you have acquired uh, for your personal development, but above all for the development of this country. Honorable Minister, as you are aware, uh, DIT is part of the assessing organ for our new curriculum which is being rolled out for the lower secondary and uh, this is a uh, one move in the right direction which i'm sure will help us 
to develop uh, skills in our learners at the earlier age. May I also urge all stakeholders to embrace skills training for the development of our country. So, Honorable Minister, I know you have a busy schedule and I don't have to take a lot of your time. May I take this honor now to invite you to make your remarks and release the results for the DIT 2020. Honorable Minister, Minister, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, the representative of the permanent secretary. I want to respect all the protocol because I can see the, the permanent secretary. Almost every big person is here. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Today is not a day for speeches. My duty is very simple to release the results. And I think that's what the, the, the country is waiting, isn't it? But as we release this year's this 2020, people are really seriously working. I want to always associate myself with the people who have people who have results. DIT, you have results. People out there sometimes I wonder what they are talking, whether they know what they are talking about. Out there. They don't see anything good coming from the Ministry of Education and Sports. These young men and women, these men and women are working, burning candles almost every day. And they have results to show. But some don't see this. You need to come to DIT, to the Directorate of National Training, and see. I used to know what was taking place here some years ago, or many years ago. Oh, but there is something good that's going on in here and we should appreciate it you can forget to say anything about what I'm about to say but at least an appreciation to our staff in the Ministry of Education and Sports who are doing a wonderful job thank you for inviting me I loved the warm welcome I loved the your anthem that welcomed me that you are promoting employable skills. I loved that. I loved it. Thank you for inviting. Thank you for the detailed, comprehensive reports. This is why I know management and the staff are paid to do this. But there is a very important person behind this who is providing the good leadership that is the council, chairman and your council. Thank you, thank you so much for guiding these people properly. I wish I had the means to extend your stay. But of course, the, the, we have got to follow the law, and we shall follow it today. But thank you, uh, Chair, please convey our gratitude at the ministry to each and every member for guiding and giving direction to the management that's doing a wonderful job. I've noted with appreciation, with appreciation, I've loved it, that the numbers of candidates registering for this kind of assessment is on the increase every year, every year. I loved that. I loved it. Even the centers of assessment are also on the increase. I loved it. I feel whoever has a skill should be assessed 
in the country, whoever has a skill. And I strongly feel that those employers out there should stop employing people who are not skilled. It's becoming very expensive. Should not employ people <laughs> who are not trained. DIT has done us a favor good to assess whoever. That's why I'm very serious, the calling upon whoever is out there to register and be assessed. They give you a certificate which you'll be showing to the employers. They are promoting employable skills. I want to congratulate DIT for the many gigantic achievement in all directions. In his report, he has just picked on a few. I had an opportunity to interact, I've had as their supervisor, I've had an opportunity to interact with them many times. These people have been seriously working and that's why they have achieved so much. I'm happy, very happy to note that the Director of National Training is now ISO certified. That is something we should be very proud of and we should celebrate it. With this kind of certification, if you have that paper from here, do I understand it? You can easily fit into employment, not only here in the Uganda, but regionally and internationally, isn't it, Patrick? Why don't we celebrate that and many others? <laughs> Friends, I'll not take you through what I've seen and that has impressed me, and if I start doing that, I'll spend the whole day. But I only really want to say and pray that whenever they give you an assignment, like we gave an assignment to the governing council, please perform, please deliver. The public and the people who voted us in office want to see results. Let's simulate what's going on in DIT. I'll to emulate that. I've noted with a lot of appreciation. Ladies and gentlemen, vocational skills which are being promoted here and in our institutions is the way to go if we are to develop this country. Vocational skills are vital for the individual, for the enterprises, and the economy since they lead to self-reliance, increased productivity, and of course, high incomes for the nation. Shortage of these skills retards the capacity to solve problems, slows down the process of national transformation, and prolongs the journey to development. Uganda must develop and develop very fast. And if the formula is each and every Ugandan acquiring a vocational skill, let's do it. Research has shown that this is the way to go. Even when you look at our manifesto, the NIM manifesto of 2021-2026, our NRM manifesto puts a lot of emphasis on turning our youth into manufacturer using the zono, the, the zono industrial hubs. When you read the manifesto, this is very clear. What our youth, every, almost every youth, to have a skill that will enable him to put up something or fit into the market, the employee job market. The government has piloted skilling programs for the youth and women throughout the five divisions of Kampala, I'm sure this one you know. Of course, these include the presidential initiatives on skilling the girl and boy child program. I'm very happy to learn that this program is being assessed by DIT. The, the government is also set to establish centers to train and equip the youth and women in carpentry, fabri fabrication, welding, shoemaking, embroidery, tailoring, weaving, hairdressing, knitting, bakery, crafts, and stone cutting. 
These centers will equally be assessed and certified by the Directorate of Industrial Training, not anybody else. I just want to urge Ugandans, especially the youth, to utilize the available skilling opportunities put in place by government to acquire relevant skills that suit the dynamic world which we live in today. And of course you tell me many youth are unemployed. Others are unemployed. The problem is the skill. What skill do you have? Hmm? Which skill? Is it needed in the job market? Has it been measured by DIT? With the high rates of youth unemployment faced by the country, learners in schools and those out of school should take advantage of the opportunity to register with the enterprises and the vocational institutions to acquire the badly needed skills which will prepare you for employment. I pray, and it's my prayer, that vocational education and training becomes a mandatory requirement by law. That's my prayer. And I'm working hard as your minister to see that almost every education program we have has that element of vocationalizing the education system. And I want to see all businesses, technical and vocational enterprises in Uganda, employing only skilled workers and competent technicians. I want to see a situation where if you are looking for some work in my house, I should be able to ask you where is that certificate from DIT. Is it a bad idea, ladies and gentlemen? And when I heard that, that some, some primary schools have taken it up, I felt very good. I think you heard about that. Um, I've, I've, I've been told, and I think it is true because I've been to that school, Mbarala Principal Pri Pri Municipality Primary School, where five, over 500 pupils, together with their teachers, led by the head teacher, were assessed by DIT. And those younger kids are moving with their certificates. Should they do, be in need of a job, they just pull out and they'll be employed. Isn't that wonderful? Why don't we celebrate it? <laughs> this is a very good strategy in rebranding technical vocation, education, and the training. And that's what we should be doing, all of us. Allow me to end by congratulating the candidates whose results are being released today upon this great achievement. Remember not to suffer from that disease which His Excellency talked about recently of arrivalism. That you have arrived. No, Uganda needs your added value. Hmm? I know you have all gone through competence-based education and training as emphasized in the de our development plan three. I just want to urge you to utilize the skills, knowledge, and experience you have acquired to develop yourselves and also our country, Uganda. I commend, but please continuously be adding value by going back to acquire more skills, more skills in this era, in this century. Those who are going to be rich are those who have more skills. There's nothing wrong with acquiring more when you can. I commend DIT Council, the leadership and the staff of DIT as well, and all those who have supported the results we are celebrating today. Lastly, lastly, however many skills you have, however much money you have, if you are not alive, if you are not healthy, all that will be put to waste. Ladies and gentlemen, I want, to sub I want to encourage all of you here present, and those who are listening to me, life first. You are where 
that COVID is still with us and the COVID kills. Our institutions, particularly education institutions, are still closed, partially closed, some, because we have opened a few, and they're going to, because of COVID that is terrorizing almost everybody in this world. And have been, we have been told that the only way we can easily get back to normal life is by observing the SOPs. Very simple. Mask yourself. If you need three, add three, four. Wash your hands. Observe that social distance. But most importantly, go for vaccination. The country has enough vaccine to help to all of you who still have the energy to work and develop this country. I want to pray or remind my colleagues who are associated with education institutions, teachers, non-teaching staff, lecturers, and our students to go for vaccination. Those who will not have been vaccinated by the time we opened, we are, not, we are not going to allow you to go and teach. No. We want you alive. So, the program has been launched. I don't want to say what you have not heard, but it's important you go for vaccination. I've taken mine. I'm still here. There shouldn't be anything to stop you from taking the, the vaccine. With those few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I want to wish all our, our, our candidates the best and go out and make money. Go out and acquire more skills for God and my country. I declare the results of 2020 officially released for God and my country. Ah, ah, but when you stand up, you are taller than everybody. Just, will they be able to see this? No, you sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. By virtue of the powers entrusted to me, I did officially release the DIT assessment results for 2020 for God and my country. Uh -huh. They want you to go away. You go away. Your friends are complaining there. This cameraman. PS. 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 Is this enough? Is this enough? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister of State for Higher Education for the official release of the DIT results for the year 2020. We appreciate the commitment. Next on the agenda, I would like to take this opportunity to invite the Director DIT to call upon the engineer, Winnie Nalu Yinda and Stefan Weinberg for the launch of the assessment and training package for plant operator. Uh, Honorable Minister, you are going to launch the assessment and training package for plant operators. This was supported by UNIDO and the uh, engineer Narienda from Minister of Works is already here and Stefan they are already here. Please, you come and uh, we launch. It is uh, like a curriculum. We are going to test all plant operators. And the school for Minister of Works, uh, I think, is in Ruero. So you need to take interest. Engineer, please. Oh, okay, no company. Maybe sell it, but they have. 
That wonderful people. Another handicraft for the for the council that came up with the idea. But but we have to explain here, yeah, we have to explain this. Thank you so much. We shall also have the representative for the permanent secretary to sign. The acting director. The ITC. And then doctor, please. Please sign, engineer. A group photo, please. Honorable Minister. <laughs> okay, please. Okay. Okay. Yes. Honorable Minister of State for Higher Education, we are also, we are also going to hand over the land title for Chichusa Farm. Honourable Minister, in respect of the SOPs, the Honourable Minister would like to hand over officially two titles for the Kikusa farm, which is associated with DIT. It is an acreage of 200 and six acres with the the with the land titles here present already in the names of DIT Lugogo Business Incubation Center as one of the things that have been done. <laughs> when this man is handing over, he should always be handing over these titles and other assets of the institution. I thank you, Honorable Minister.
Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is that all? Yes, please. Welcome. The gift. Okay. This gift. It is you. Yeah, it is you. To hand over to him. Honourable Minister, once again, allow me to hand over this gift from the Industrial Training Council and DIT for you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. And the sign that you see there is the partnership to survive. <laughs> I hope it's not more than 100,000. No, it's not more than 100,000. I am a volume of myself. <laughs> thank you very much. I, I think I take over the functions, not anthems in reverse order. The first anthems in reverse order. Group photos are outside the function. The chairman has spoken. Anthems in reverse order. In reverse order. And uh, where is our choir? I don't like anthems that are made on machines when we have a choir here. The, the, Oh, no, Minister, this is the DIT choir, all workers. Ah, that's, what, that's what I meant by the home world camp. Yes. Home so the choir are going to lead us in the anthem, one stanza each, reverse order. Thank you. Starting with the DIT. One stanza each. No, we don't want your mic. Directorate of Industrial Training. Redefining the essence of education, practical skills for sustainable development, the ultimate solution to unemployment, highest standards in the quality and efficiency of industrial training, adequate supply of well-trained manpower at all levels in the world of work. In resolve, we shall stand. Employable skills we promote. For the greater good we shall serve. And there is prominence in the world. The East African anthem. Africa Mashariki Tuweze Shekuishi kwa amani Tutimize na marengo yetu Jumuia yetu sote tuilinde Tuajibike, tuimarike Umoja wetu ni mbuzo yetu Idu mjumuia yetu The Uganda National Anthem. Oh, Uganda. Oh, Uganda. 